Haggai chapter 2, verse 18 to 19. Somebody read for me. Consider now from this day and upward, from the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, consider it. Verse 19. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree had not brought forth. But from this day would I bless you. Consider it. Put it into your mind. What does that mean? Consider it mean put it in your mind. What does that mean? Remember this in your mind. At a time like this, in the ninth month, at a time like this, in the ninth month, I, the Lord, will bless you. Consider it. Do not forget it. Remember it. That at a time like this, from the ninth month, I, the Lord, I will bless you. I will visit you. The question is, how can I be blessed when I am nobody? At a time like this, in a situation like this, when houses are being born, when crises are looming all over the world, when economy downtown is affecting the nation, so many family has been displaced. Fire has destroyed so many lives. People are being repatriated back to their own country. Fire is raging north, south, west, and east. Properties are being destroyed. Accommodations and life. Li Source of livelihood are being destroyed. Nations are weeping and are crying. Individuals are crying at a time like this. I need you, O oh Lord. I need you. I need you, O oh God. Bless me, O oh Lord, my Savior. My God. To Because I don't even know what tomorrow we speak. I don't even know what tonight we speak. Many families, as I'm talking to you now, not only in South Africa, in Africa as a whole, not only in Africa, even in America. Bahama today is in crisis. How many of you saw the scene of Bahama? How many of you have seen, you saw the scene in, what is this for, fire? Eh? Amazon fire, fire. In fact, the world is, is shaking now. And if you had that testimony, then I will still play it for you. I will still play that clip for you. So, studio, get it ready again. God said, by the mouth of this small prophet, said 2019 is a year of fire. How many of you remember? 
that there is going to be what? Fire destruction everywhere. Can I tell you the truth? There will be ranging of fire in 2019. It's not by it's not the cause. The what is the agenda of God in the spiritual realm, in the satanic camp, in the godless camp for 2019? 2019 is loaded with both his own evil and his own good. For us and for you, you will enjoy the goodness of 2019. But I want to show you the secret of Satan so that you will know how to deal with Satan. And tell Satan, Satan, you are fading. Because why? I know your secret. What is 2019? I want to show you how 2019 will look like. So that when you hear it here and there, you will know that no, it's not me. I know the secret. And I know what God planned for me. Let me show you. Jeremiah chapter 52, verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 52, verse 12. Let's see together quickly. Now, which was the, what? Which year? Eh? Which was? What is tomorrow? I saw some funny, funny, Anyway, I'm going to give you a revelation. The 19th. The 19th. The 19th. Let's see together. The 19th years of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem. What happened? Verse 13. And burned the house of the Lord. And the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men, born he with fire. Born it with fire. Simply let me tell you, 2019 is a year of Nebuchadnezzar. Is it my word? Haven't you read it? It's a year of Nebuchadnezzar. Just say it like that. What's 2019? It's a year of the Nebu. Nebu? It's a year of what? And what is the year of Nebu? Did you see it? King of Babylon came Nebu Saddam. Eh? It was the year of Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, and now came another Nebu. Oh, that's not what's going on. There are two neighbors there. The king, Nebuchadnezzar. And then his captain, the, arm, the captains of the army. His name is also called what? He's called Nebuchadnezzar. Now he came. When he came, what did he do? Verse 13. And he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all houses of Jerusalem. And all the houses of the great men born in with what? With fire. Can I tell you the truth? There will be ranging of fire in 2019. It's not by, it's not the cause. It is scriptural. Satan knew this word. Whether you like it or not, if you cannot unravel this secret, you, you will just be, people will just be dying cheaply like this because they don't know the secret. I've told, write it down. There will be so many. You, you saw the fire that started this year, late this year. Will be so, it's a joke to what's going to be happening in 2019. But listen to me. Because you already know the secret, Satan will run away from you. Amen. He said, this one knows my secret already, so there is no point going there. Fire and destructions in places right in now places. the amazon rainforest is being consumed by fire in fact there's an 80 percent increase in fires 
just over the last year alone. And this comes, of course, after the hottest July our planet has ever seen. I want you to take a look at these pictures showing the smoke from space. These are images from high above covering huge parts of South America. Now, this isn't an act of God. It's farmers and ranchers intentionally destroying the land for more development. The Amazon Basin is, of course, known as the lungs of the world. It provides 20% of the oxygen for the entire planet. But Can I tell you the truth? There will be raging of fire in 2019. It's not bad. Strikes hit the heart of Saudi Arabia's oil industry and disrupted more than 5% of the world's oil supply. I saw fire, raging of fires, raging of fires in 2019. What do you see now? Fire, amazing fire. It has never happened before in the whole world, in the entire head. In fact, the global it is at stake now are you telling me you don't need god in fact the only people that are safe this moment the crisis that is happening in the world now are the people that are dead this are the only people that are safe now people that are dead i'm telling you the truth people that are dead that are dead that, that die in fact so many people are looking for death now in order to escape this if you watch the if you watch the, the 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 fire if you watch the calamity in bahama you will shed tears that is advanced nation. it we moved from bahama it moved now to hong kong it started from mozambique this year all manner of things are you telling me at a time like this you don't need god then Tell me, who do you need? Do you need me? Even me, I'm running away to God, to meet God. I'm hiding myself before God. Who are you hiding yourself with? So God asked me to speak to children of the Lord at a time like this. Say it again. At a time. And in a time like this. I want you to have good, this good news. God is a God of time and season. And I want to show you something in the scripture. God is a God of desert. He's a God that inhabits in the midst of crisis. There was a raging water with the disciples. And the disciple cry, Jesus, Jesus, don't you see that we are perishing? He said, but I was there. In the crisis time, I'm there. I'm with you. I'm with you. I want us to open the scripture to the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And we are going to read from verse 1. Some verses there. Verse 1. Now, Moses kept the flocks of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. I want you to underline it. To the where? To the backside of the desert. How can a reasonable person be leading flocks to the backside of the desert? How many of you know what is desert? Desert is a place of disaster. Where there are no food, where there are no waters. In the desert, how can a reasonable man be leading cattle that need grasses, water in a desert? Come on, think about it. 
at a time like this, in a desert time like this, there is God. Say, there is God. Oh. Say it again. He led the sheep, the flocks, into the bar side of the desert. I don't know where is your own desert today. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen in your desert this morning. I want to console people that have been affected in Africa, in America, globally today, that in their deserts, God that, that inhabit and appear to Moses will appear to them today in his deserts. Verse 2. And the angels of the Lord appear unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush is born with fire, and the bush, the bush was not consumed. Can you hear me? There are fires ranging globally today. There are fires ranging in CBD. Ranging in Pretoria, ranging across South Africa, Mozambique, Nigeria, America. But hear me. The fire, the burning fire was so much that the intensity of it was so high, but the grass, the grass could not be consumed. What is the grass? In the contemporary, what is the grass? The living world. The living world. The grass. The living world. Its world cannot be consumed. In the midst of the fire, hear me. I want you to know this one. Standing upon his world. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. There will be fire left and right, but when you are standing on the promise of God, the fire cannot consume you. I refuse to be consumed by fire that is raging. And I want you to say it to yourself, people of the Lord, that I refused to be consumed by the raging fire because if, if God could not consume the grass in the desert where Moses was standing. It was a parable that men, hear me, you will see fire left and right, but it will not what consume you. It was a parable. The fire that we are talking about, it was prophetically declared. There, there are burning fires. He said, Moses, even in that scripture, that prophecy said, Thou knowest now the secret. So when you hear it, it I wish they can play it. He said, he said, the prophecy said, You will hear it left and right. Do not be moved. The prophecy was there. He said, Do not be moved because you know the secret. Why should you be moved by what is happening right now? Because you know the secret before it happened. Don't you know? Are you not sons and daughters of prophets? Why should you be seeking? Why should you be moved? The fire was burning. Looked. Behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burned. Listen to me. I will now focus on God to see why I am not consumed. At a time like this. Are you perfect? Am I perfect? 
verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called, on, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Use me. As the Lord was worthy. Here am I. Use me. Here am Use me. Use me, Lord. Here am I. As the Lord wants a body, here am I, use me. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When it calls me, I will have a piece of yeah, walking for a piece of yeah, a piece of yeah, a piece of yeah, a piece of Walking for my God, oh, I be somewhere, oh God, I be somewhere. Walking for God. Verse seven say, and the Lord said. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, which are in Africa, which are in America, which are in Europe. We are the people of the Lord God is referring to in the land of bondage. In the burning land, in the desert land, I have seen the affliction of my brother, my sister, hearing me now. In the midst of the fire, I have seen the affliction of my people. People that were consumed by fire. People that their, their property were destroyed. People that their property, their family were displaced by fire. I have seen the affliction of my people in a time like this. I want you to say to where you are seated, Lord, at a time like this, where are you? I'd like you to say it, ask him, Lord, in a time like this, at a time like this, where are you? Shut up! Shut up! And God sent me to you. Tell my people I have seen their cry by reasons of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow. Hey. He knows you. He knows me. He knows us. He found me. He knows me. I have seen the affliction and the sorrow by the reasons of their taskmasters. Who is the taskmaster? Anybody that oppresses your life is a taskmaster. Xenophobic is a taskmaster. You must kick it out. Oppression, embarrassment, and shame is a taskmaster of your life. Kick him out. What does our God say to me? 
He said, in verse 13, 16, go, he sent me to you. Hear me, everybody on that side of my voice, God sent me to you this morning. As he sent Moses, he said, gather the elders of free strength together and say unto them, verse 16, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, shh, I have surely visited you. I have surely, I have surely visited you. It's our month of uncommon visitation. And he said, I have surely visited you. He's not coming. He has visited you. He's not coming. He has visited you. He's with you now. I'm not just coming. I have visited you. But when he visits you, did you welcome him? And that's why you think he's still coming. He's there already. You didn't welcome him. You didn't know him. When he calls you, I have visited you. And I've seen that which is done to you in the land. I have seen the evil that is done to you. I have seen your affliction. I know where your situation is this morning. I know where your circumstances is. I know what your circumstances is this morning. It's about how the Lord I have visited you. Hear me? Why is he going to visit me? Why has he visited me? Verse 17 made it clear to me. And I have said, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Ethers and the Amorites and the Perisites and the Hevites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey at a time like this. You don't need any word beside this word, this man, this moment. You don't need anybody to derail you. You don't need anybody to instigate you. You don't need anybody to input fear into you. You don't need anybody to challenge you. You don't need anybody to embarrass you. If you know what God says about you, about me, in prophecy, you're going to stand firm. You're going to stand with your mind. You're going to stand upright. And challenge any situation that challenges you. Because I know what God says who I am. I know what God says who I am. I know who I am in this situation. I know who God says I am. And I want to show you both. And he said, look it. Look at it in verse 21. And I will give these people favor. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Jesus. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall go not empty. You shall not go empty. I know who God say I am. Who are you? Who do you say you are? When they call you query, query, who do you say you are? Listen to me. You can be a stranger in my house if you take yourself as a stranger. Xenophobic is not only Afrophobia or whatever. It's about people to each other. Do you know that a Zulu man can say to a Kosa man that uh, you have a query, query? An Igbo man can say to a Yoruba man that you have a query, query? So don't let us forget this. It's not only tribalism. It's human hatred to each others. Human what? Hatred to each others. I have given you favor. So why do you have to run away? For I know who God says I am. I know who God says I am. He says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am, I know who God says I am. God, he says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. Whoa! 
want you to have this mentality at a time like this. Say to the devil, I know who I am. Because when many are saying there is a casting down, I will say there is what? There is a lifting up. At a time like this, God has granted me and you favor in the sight of the people. Don't quickly forget this. Before you run out of the land, wherever you are, is America safe? No, America is not safe. Is Nigeria safe? No. Is Zambia? Is Mozambique? Is Zimbabwe? Is London safe? No. In fact, London and Europe now they are fighting. British assist. We don't know what's going to happen now in the next few months. Where is it that is safe? Except the house of the Lord. Except the house of the Lord. In the presence of God, there is what? There is fullness of joy. And at his right, and there is what? Forevermore. I want you to hold on to God at a time like this. I have a family that affected in this crisis also. Many of us are friends, or even if not, at least your shop right there, your empty end there is affected one way or the other. There is no other time at a time like this to know who you are. However, can God visit me in a time like this? When nothing is working, this is where I'm going. When and when nothing seems to be working, can God still bless people? Can God still bless me when nothing seems to be working? And when I am nothing, people that, have, that have, are facing the challenges right now, they are crying now, can God visit me again? When everything has been taken away, God will visit you again. God is visiting you this morning. God is visiting you this morning. And I want you to hold on to this key word that I'm going to lay into your hand. That if you believe God for divine visitation, I want you to hold on to this. And I want to advise you from, from what the Lord asked me to tell you. Number one, how can God be vis how can I be visited and be blessed at a time like this when nothing is working? Number one, be hopeful. Be hopeful. Number one, be hopeful and have faith in him. Say, be hopeful and have faith. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, be hopeful and have faith in God. Everything looks hopelessness now. If you follow the hopelessness situation, you will become hopeless also. The plan of enemies is to make you to see that nothing is working. When it makes you to see nothing is working, it makes you to be hopeless. If Satan cannot take your hope, he can't take your faith. And if Satan cannot take your faith, he can't take your hope. Throw not away your confidence, you are the great recompense of reward. Hope in God is faith in him. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know how many, what people have lost beside you. I want you to give them hope. I don't know what Christ is facing you right now. I don't know the challenges. I don't know the shame. I don't know the reproaches. I want you to have hope. Tell your neighbor, say, have hope. Have hope. To them that are joined to the living, there is what? There is life and there is hope. You are still alive. God will come for you. God, my God, will come for you. I don't know what the enemy has stolen from you. I don't know what the crisis has stolen from you. In a time like this, God of hope is who you, what you need. Have faith in him. 
have faith in him. Number two, in a time like this, I want you to stay focused. To stay focused means be immovable. Be immovable. Stay focused. Don't be distracted. Don't let what is happening left and right distract you. If you allow them to distract you, to bounce on you, to occupy you too much, it will take and it might take your hope. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what people have lost. I want you to still stay focused on the little that remain. Even if ashes remain in your, in your own house, in your own shop, that ashes can still turn to gold if you remain focused. It's hard to say it. Somebody will say, but pastor, have you been through this before? If it is you, you won't be saying this. I know what God says about me. I have been there before. I came from the ashes to, I came from ashes, from my pit. I came from the pit. And I know there is no pit that is even deeper than where I came from. Joseph came from the pit. He became a king. You can also rise and you will be rise and you will still rise. If you stay focused, the hashish can turn to gold. The remnant can turn to multiplication. If you stay hopeful, if you stay focused, be immovable. And I want you to know that in your state of immovable, remember this in your brain that no condition is permanent. Say it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. No condition is permanent. There is an end to every affliction. The worst thing, there is an end. Death is an end to every ungodly sin. Everything that arrests your life, they shall come to an end today. They will die today. In the name of Jesus, no condition is permanent. Excuse me. Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying? You might be unemployed today. It's not permanent. You might be moving up and down looking for help, looking for assistance, and nobody seems to know you today. It's not permanent. After this morning, Somebody will arise for you. Help will arise for you. Help will arise for you. I say help will arise for you. They might ignore you today. They might abandon you today. But I want you to know. Maybe they say you are stinking. Maybe they say you are smelly. I want you to know. No condition is permanent. I'd like you to tell your neighbor. If you believe it, say neighbor. No condition is permanent. I might be poor today. I know who God says I am. After the service this morning, you will see me as a millionaire. Stay focused. Number three, trust yourself. Believe in yourself that I can make it. At a time like this, believe in yourself that I can. Say, I can. Say, I can. Believe in yourself that I will make it. Say it. Say it louder. Say it louder. Believe in your power, in your, in your spouse. Believe in your partner. Believe in your parent. And tell your parent, mom, dad, we can make it. Tell your wife, tell your husband when you get home today. Baby, darling, 
We can make it. We can. We will make it. Hello? We will make it. Tell your children when you get home. They fail to come to church with you because they feel everything is down. Tell them when you get back home and say to my son, to my, to my daughter, we will make it. We will make it. We will so tell your parents, mom, dad, I will make it. Say, I can. Say, I can. I believe I can fly. Come on, take your prayer. Come on, and sing for me. Stand up. Stand up, stand up. You are too seated. You want to sleep. Yes, say I can. I believe I can fly. I can say I'm flying I'm soaring at a time like this when men think that you have been downcasted I like you to stand up when there is no food to eat in your house when there is no breakfast, stand up and pray in the Holy Ghost and say, I can. When they say there is no, there is no work, tell them, I don't need your work. I need God's blessing. I can. At a time like this, say at a time like this, I know who God say I am. I'm his friend. I can fly. I have the power and an ability. I put my trust in him. I can fly. Give the Lord a clap offering. Please be comfortable, sitting. Trust yourself. Think less of your status or your condition. Many people weigh themselves down because they think too much of their condition. And after thinking, 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 the thinking has no solution. It's building more high blood pressure. Why think it too much upon what you cannot help now? Put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. Trust that uh, God, you raised me up to this level. You didn't kill me. I didn't die when I was five years, when I was 10 years, when I was 15 years. I didn't die. How can I now die? Trust in yourself. Believe in yourself that you will make it, that you will succeed. Before you give up the ghost, Please, for one moment this morning, remember God that has kept you up to 20 years old, 50 years old. Is he no longer alive? Believe in him. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. I say, who has the final say? Jehovah of the Jehovah turn my life around Jehovah turn my life around He was away when there was no way Jehovah has the final say It makes a way where there is no way for you to be where you are today Satan can be playing upon your ass now, upon your brain now, upon, but tell Satan, Satan, 
get behind me. I am moving forward at a time like this. What else do I need to do? Number four, trust in the Lord's word. Trust in the capability of the Lord's ability. Trust what? In God's words. Lean not on the word. If you lean on the word, event happening in the word now will shake you, will terrify you. But lean on the word, words, the words of God, not on the word, on the WRAD, not on the global news. Lean on good God news. And good news is what I'm telling you today, that in your desert, God is there with you. In the desert, God met Moses. God is meeting you today in your desert. Trust in God's word and the capability of the Lord's ability. Okay, let us agree that they say you cannot and you have also said that you cannot. Why can't you change your mind now that, okay, whatever I cannot, God can. What does the world say? The world say, I am the head and not the tail. He said, I will live but not die. When men are saying there's a casting down, say there's a lifting up. So rise up on that word, the word of the Lord, and challenge that situation. Don't be crying, crying, Christian. Weeping and crying for every situation. No house rent, you are crying. No baby, you are crying. No job, you are crying. Why? Lift up your voice and say, Lord, Remeka, Miracle Walker. Armies keep her light in the darkness. There is no be seated. Never allow distraction by the noise. Hello? If you allow yourself to be distracted by the noise or noises, you will not go out. Hey! There is a crisis in Alessandra. We are not going to church today. That's where, if you stay there, you may be cut off even in the house. Never allow noises to distract you. There is no... Oh, they are closing something yesterday. Something shut down. My wife says something shut down. I said, if they shut it down, do they shut my office down? Yeah, on Friday. Something shut down. In fact, Modi Street, that's where my office is. Modi, where they say they will shut down. I say, they shut Modi down. Do they sort my leg down? Mm -hmm. So then, like, if I drive there and there is no way, won't I take my, won't I park my car in the centre mall and take my leg and walk to my office? Hello. Ah, I've read it. They said it. Everything, even messages were coming to me. Papa, don't go to his office oh, tomorrow. On Friday, something shut down. I say they shut down. They are doing their own thing. So I should shut down my own thing also. When I drove there, do you know what? I found that even my own office, the place to enter my office was open. There was no any shutdown. I said, you see, Satan. If you are distracted, you will be disorganized. Don't move by the noise. The world is created for noise. Where there is no noise, there is no world. Hello? Don't be distracted by the noise. Be focused by the word. In the voice, in any noise, there is a voice. Listen to the voice of God in every noises. But if you keep listening to the noises, you will be completely distracted. You will not even know when your blessings are located. Don't allow any noises. 
That's why avoid gossip. You know, do you know that most of I don't, I don't listen to news. I don't play, I don't play news. Because they are distractions, they are distra- they will distract me. I, I, I took my car on Friday. I said, baby, I'll see you in the evening. He said, you are going to work. I said, yes, I'm going to work. In fact, I made so many exploits on Friday. Which I would not have been able to succeed or to make if I had listened to the noises. Many of us we are we are we are trapped. We are what? We are trapped in our own world because of the noise or the noises that we listen to, instead of the word that we should listen to. What word? Word of God. Word of life. Word of faith. Say, go on. You can do it. Number six. Never the next. In every, in a time like this, in every crisis like this, take a reasonable decision and don't be dil- disillusioned. Don't be what? Don't be delusion. Take reasonable decision. At a time like this, son, daughters, you must always take reasonable decision. Don't take a rational decision. Take reasonable decision and don't be delusion. Delusion is dangerous and it can kill. Take what? Reasonable decision. At times, what is reasonable to you may be unreasonable to others. That's why sometimes Take cancer. Take what? Take cancer. In the multitude of a cancer, there is what? There is safety. Don't take decision on your own based on circumstances or your own or of your own. Take a little bit of cancer. Please, sir, I want to do this. What do you think? Ask somebody. Ask somebody that you know is intelligent. Ask somebody that you know will tell you not what you want to hear, but what you should know. Say, can I do this? What do you think? I want to leave. Can I leave? If you are, you know, so don't take some irrational decision. Make so many people to be irrational. The decision you take now will determine what, where you will be tomorrow. Take what? Rational, reasonable, reasonable decision. In your decision, don't think, yes, let me go and build the airport now. That's your own decision. When you are still struggling with how to park your own bicycle, you say you want to go and build the airport. Take this neighbor decision now. Does it make sense? You don't even have a place where you are parking your bicycle or your car now. You say you want to go and build the airport. Where would you, where would you get the anger? Take what? Reasonable. You are handy. Your job is giving you 3,000. You said you want to go and live in something. You want to go and buy a, rent a house of 5,000 because you have faith in God. Take reasonable decision. Don't be delusion. Many Christians live in delusion. At a time like this, some people have come to me. Papa, we are going to London. We want to relocate to London. We want to relocate to America. Uh, we want to relocate to Nigeria. Uh, we want to relocate to Europe. I said, you are made. You are what? You are made. You are here. You are here. You are a refugee. Yeah. And you want to go to Canada. I said, Papa, we want to relocate to Canada. I said, who you? Who they talk? I look at them. I said, who you? Who they talk? Uh, to relocate, to relocate, to relocate. They, you think that they are, they, they, they are crossing the border? Take reasonable. Don't be delusion. One of my friends came one day. They said, well, Papa, me and our children, we are going to Canada. And I said, I asked my wife, I said, I think they are dashing people now Canada visa. Ne? I, I told my wife, I said, I think they are dashing people now Canada visa. Take reasonable decision. This is the people we even hear that, uh, yes, this makes sense. Don't take a rational decision not because of the present situation. At a time like this. What do you do? At a time like this, what do you do? Take reasonable decision. It will help you. 
Don't be moved by the noise to rush to taking a decision. The noise will come down, no? But by the time you have taken your decision, nobody will be able to calm you down. Back up. You are here, born. We won't be able to call you back. Come back, oh, come back, oh. There is no reverse in aeroplane. How many of you know that? You can't reverse. So the moment before you fly, we won't be able to stop you. Taxi small. Maybe before you finish taxi, we will call you back. Take this neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Take this neighbor. Decision. Unfortunately, some people's wife, some husbands, some wife, they don't even advise themselves correctly. The husband will say, darling, we are leaving. Eh? The wife will say, eh? we are leaving. Okay. And number seven, two more. Be useful and be resourceful. At a time like this, make yourself useful and be resourceful. At a time like this, you will suffer if you are not useful to yourself or to anybody. And you are not resourceful to yourself, to anybody. In fact, you are the first person that, you are the first person that will suffer. Be what? Be useful to yourself. Be resourceful to others. You are not useful even to yourself. That's why you see so many of you, even you just like sleeping because the bed they give to yourself is free. You have, the house you are living is free. You are not paying rent. So you sleep, you sleep, you become obesity. You eat, you eat, you eat, you become obesity. Because you are not even useful to yourself. Not to talk of being resourceful. to others. Nobody can say that uh, this is the reason why I need you. You can come to me now and say, Papa, I want to relocate to America. I will say, America, bye-bye because I know you are not useful to me. You are not even useful to this church. Papa, I want to leave this church. I will say, ah, before I bye-bye. You are not even useful here. Go. I get what I'm saying. Be useful and be resourceful. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, make yourself useful to yourself. Do you know that some people even hate themselves? They are not even useful to themselves. They sleep, they like to sleep. Now it's winter, it's now, it's now it's summer now. Uh -huh. You hear people now begin to say, it's too, there is too much sun. I can't go out now. You can't go out to go and look for work. You will die of hunger. Be useful to yourself. It's too sunny now. They, it's too hot. When it was cold, it was too cold. Now it's hot now. It's too hot. Lazy people. Be resourceful. Be resourceful. If you are resourceful, somebody will call you and say, hey, please come and help us do this thing. And they will give you five rand or twenty rand or hundred rand. If you are resourceful. But you are not resourceful. You are, if you are not resourceful, you are what? You are useless. There are many useless Christians. Many useless sons and daughters. They are useless in the house. They are useless in the office. They are useless in church. So we don't, so the society don't need you. So if they say you are correquere, you are actually a correquere. You are a stranger. So you can ask Amber. Amber. But if you know that you are useful, nothing can remove you. They need you. They need you. When you are useful, they need you. Be useful to yourself. Be resourceful. Think of what you can do. Create something that people will, be, will take advantage and they will need you. And solve people's problems. You will get money from it. Look for where they need water. Go and sell water for them. Look for where they need to cut here. Go and cut here for them. Look for where somebody needs 
to wash or iron his other clothes. Go and do it for him. He will give you 100 or 200. And from there, he will take you to another place. He will, there, he will take you to another place. I used to have a secretary, Gracious. She started in our house as a, as a peace worker. Peace worker downstairs. And then we saw how she's working. Mama said, can we ask this girl to come and be cleaning for us? He said, yes. Okay, so she started cleaning for us. We took her, and she was cleaning for us for about a year. And then I took, him, I took her to the office to be a secretary and to be my PA. And she was controlling the card and everything. But the day you are no longer useful to yourself, you are no longer resourceful to other person, then you become useless. The day she no longer be useful to, and then, you know, the story changed. Be useful to yourself and be resourceful to others. Any dummy that are useful or resourceful. In fact, you cannot be called a dummy where you are resourceful and you are useful. You cannot. Age does not determine whether you are small or you are young. Make yourself useful and resourceful. You'll be the envy of nation. Finally, be prayerful and stay put. Be prayerful and stay put. Your, your prayer life is becoming is, is, is giving me a concern in this ministry. Our prayer life is giving me what? A concern in this ministry. That's why we are going more into more prayer section and forget all these mundane things. I want to see you more in the spiritual realm. Be prayerful. When is this service? It's a prayer Sunday. It's a prayer service. It's not teaching. I can't find you. It gives me concern that do you people pray at all? Warfare. We do warfare on Wednesdays. I can't find you there. I'm afraid. Do you do warfare in your house when you are snoring? Hello? Be prayerful and where you are prayerful, stay put. Don't be moved when you are prayerful. Because by the time God is visiting you in your prayer, people that are that doesn't stay put, they have dislocated, they have displaced themselves. Finally, again, be watchful, be security conscious at a time like this. Be what? Be watchful. Watch your back. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, watch your back. Excuse me. At a time like this, you are driving. Whatever car you are driving, look at where you are going to park before you come back, before they, they vandalize your car. Be conscious. Be security conscious. Be at alert. Watch your back. At a time like this, you are sleeping, lock your door. Be security conscious. At a time like this, Satan is roaring like a lion, looking for who to devour. That's why you have to be what? Be conscious. Family, gender, gender violence, whatever that now, if you don't make yourself vulnerable, don't walk at the wrong time. Women, you said they attack you. Why would they not attack you? Are you not the one that gave them room to be, to be attacked? Be conscious. Be security conscious. Why as a woman, you are driving, you are walking alone in the night in, in, in isolated area. And to make the matter worse, you have even exposed all your body. We are seeing your cleavage. You wear mini skirts. You will live one like this. And you are walking at 10 p.m. In Hebrew or in somewhere else. You are telling me that uh, you are not inviting ungodly people. Because you have gone there to advertise yourself. Excuse me. If they harass you there, it's your cup of tea. Because you are not conscious. Christian, I'm talking to you. Don't think because you put a, 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 a wami sticker or a papa sticker, papa bangu in your hand, you will not be attacked. Even papa that you are putting his, his, his risk for in this hand, he has security for his, for his security consciousness. You, you are just working carelessly. You work carelessly, you die carelessly. It's nobody's fault. Don't tempt Satan. Don't tempt violence. The way you dress is the way people will address you. 
Why would they not arrest you when they arrest the people in town? Because they see you as a reference. Reference, or what do we call it? You want, you want to see me like this? And ask and tell me where is my ID? Or you, are, you want to bundle me in your car? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Who, who burned that police or that, that you see me like this? Even if I'm in a taxi and you are, you are saying fere, 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 and then you see me and then you now bundle me into, into the potential camp. You crazy? You won't look at me? The way you dress is the way the police, is the way the rioter will address you. You leave your hair like a rasta, they will think you are a mad person. You wear sag, they think you're a mad, mad woman or mad woman. They will think because they will say, ah, this one is quite query. See, mm, oh yeah. We throw you there. This one is. Eh. And they, they, they will take you and say, hey, this one is doubtless. Uh, you are coming from work and you lose your tie, you do everything. And you, they say, ah, this one is doubtless. Before they know that you're a manager, you will go, you are already in Mandela. Even as, as, as whoever you are, as a citizen or as a whoever you are. Be conscious. Be what? Be secure. Watch your back. Men and women. I can't, don't, don't, don't park your car where there is a, I mean, unnecessary. I mean, watch yourself. If you, it's not compulsory to take your car to some places, in a crisis like this, at a time like this, it's not compulsory that you must take your car to somewhere. If you can trek, trek there. Just to avoid what? Just to be security conscious. Hello? Am I making sense to you? So I'm balancing your life spiritually, physically. Because many people, they will tell you, yes, I've anointed you now. I've put you a mantu without any day how to be security conscious. The mantu will be useless. The anointing will be useless if you don't take security measures. If you like, put thousands of uh, bangu. Papa, prophet, uh, I mean, go when there is a crisis, you go and enter there instead of you stay, staying at home and you say you will not be mobbed. You're gone. Be prayerful, I mean, be watchful, be security conscious. Finally, or the finally, be joyful and be cheerful. At a time like this, please take away this frowning face. You are too frowny. Tell your neighbor, you are too frowny. Smile. Come on, put smile in somebody's face. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's put smile in somebody's face. Come on, let's put smile in somebody's face. Say to me. Say to me. Don't be too serious. Hey, wait now. Come on, say wait now. Don't be too serious. I think even myself, I think I will have been too serious too much. For the past 40 minutes, I've been too serious. So let's be lightly now. Wait now. Wait now. Don't be too serious, my friend. Some people face, they are too serious because of situation. Mm, they have to do... Oh! What about? They are too serious. You see that in their face. Who will they fight you? Or who will they fight? Don't be too serious. Come on, put a smile to me. I want to see your teeth. Put a smile to me. Love. Love. Ah, yeah. Listen to me. Even if you have no food in your house, make yourself cheerful. Make yourself happy. You see, sometimes we miss our blessing when we are putting on friendly face. I don't, if, I don't like to meet somebody on the road, Franny. I will avoid you. Because I know you will contaminate me. Because first thing I will see when I see you coming, or when I look at you far, and I see the way you are, something that will come to my mind is that, hey, this one is coming to take, to waste my time. I will avoid you. Whereas, there is blessing that I need to. But when I see you smiling, cheerful, I see the way you... I would be interested to say, hey, sister, how are you doing? You say, yeah, papa, I'm fine. I'm fine, but, I'm, I'm, but I need you, please. And I say, okay, well, then, yeah. then we begin to talk. Then something will happen. But if you piss me off, even from your appearance, from your face, ah, 
you are the loser. The same thing with God. Don't frown every day, every time. Be cheerful. In the, eh, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And with joy, thou shalt draw from the way of salvation. Be cheerful. Be what? Be cheerful. Be joyful. The situation will go away. This crisis will go away. Be joyful. Be what? Be joyful. Rise upon your feet, everybody. Come and give the Lord a clap of free. A lifetime I will give God 